Okay, so when I left off, I was talking about the sites that have like um, lunar alignments according to their construction with each other, with the other sites. So, um, these are among the first built in the canyon, the ones with these lunar maximum alignments. And um, along east and west ends, respectively. Uh, another long distance alignment connects Panasco Blanco with Una Vida, our two very early great houses along the lunar maximum line, and those two are 6.2 miles apart. Extending the other direction along the lunar maximum line from Panasco Blanco, you hit Key Biniola again, 9.3 miles away. A lot of prof ca profs cast doubt on the Solstice Project findings. I already mentioned that. In 1888, though, a well-known archaeoastronomer named John McKin Mac Malville led a field school in the ruins of Yellow Jacket and also studied Chimney Rock in the mountains east of Durango, Colorado. The site had Chacoan core and veneer architecture and was built on high, a high ridge under twin towers of stone and the towers were natural with Chicoan community beneath. So the towers are rock, natural rocks, right? And so it looks like the, the people saw these towers and went, ah, we need to build near here. But why? Because there's like the materials had to be dragged up steep mountainsides and it was far away from farmable land so there was no other reason for this community to be there but the twin rocks this was important to them so this was a site that drew, drew them to this area for other reasons and i mean the building materials they were showing their little community and it's kind of impressive the rocks right they really dragged that up anyway so they really wanted to be there and uh, as it turned out, 1988 was a lunar maximum year. So at 2 a.m., the full moon rose between the towers. And it was proven that it, ha it was a lunar observatory. So um, tree rings date chimney rocks construction to the late 1000s. Lunar maximums at 1056.57, 1075.76, and at 1093.95. Um, maybe I wrote that down wrong. Uh, they occurred at full moons closest to winter solstice. First Kiva tree rings cut 1076, and then 1093 was when a second expansion was built. And so um, the instructor's thinking that perhaps building uh, Chaco great houses was the ritual itself, or part of it. Uh, 800 to 900 CE is the earliest dating of the area. <clears throat> Lecture 21, the periphery of the ancient southwest. Uh, um, people live where natural resources are, water and arable land, and further south, weather was more extreme. So at the time, they called the desert, this desert, the Chichimeca, and the people who lived there were nomads, uncultured desert warriors. Um, Pecos and Rios, Rio Grande rivers meet a uh, culture at intersection who'd been there a thousand, thousands of years. Land not good for farming in lower Pecos. Lived on wild plants, fish, small animals. In today's West Texas, even more barren. Habited today due to oil and cattle. Rings of rock, teepee rings in spots. Um, boy, Jornada Magolan? I don't know what I was writing there harsh, sporadic pit houses and attempts at farming. Waco, Bolson, um, Firecrocker, Pueblo. 200 year floodplain farm, but abandoned in 1400. Relied a lot on hunting gathering. Hunters from north inhabited the area, not farmers from the south. Southwest cultures weren't very warlike. Late period cultures of Pacific coast complex hunter-gatherers along Pacific coast. They never adopted farming. Abundance of natural resources. One-fifth of population lived along this coast. 
It was also the most culturally and linguistically diverse area. They had little use for pottery. This was a Garden of Eden, sedentary living, seasonal rounds or trade, sharing of resource or resource distribution, triblets, a hundred people speaking one language. South California life seemed to have been the same for hundreds or thousands of years. 500 CE to uh, dated objects. 1542 European contact, 1769 colony in San Diego, Chumash, one of the largest groups, population and controlled, more desirable land. Yukut had more land though. They made sure areas they used weren't overused. Acorns in summer and fall they stored. Shellfish was a major food source. Deer bones found on Channel Islands. Leaching of acorns, boiling and drying for storage. Bow and arrow, inland hunting and security. Tomo was 30 foot long canoe. Um, what did I wrote there? Log and tar like water proofing and stitching. Chumash used Tomo for deep water fishing and control of Channel Islands. 700 CE Chumash sites found dome shaped tomes made of willow branch frames covered in grass. Two major festivals, winter solstice and fall, to honor harvest. Chief positions were hereditary and unattainable for others in Chumash society. Male homosexual transvestite class honored two wins. Chumash seem, uh, seen as peace-loving and gentle. Pacific Northwest cultures, Panhandle of Southwest Alaska and down. Ocean and salmon runs and rivers. Slaves were either born into slavery or captured and used as slaves. Planks pulled off houses and everything was moved. Artistic, spiritual, tied to land, also prone to war and used slaves. So we're talking about the North, Pacific Northwest cultures here now. Um, Labrits, facial jewelry, inserted in lips and cheeks, or cranial deformation marked elite class. Everything painted with animal skeleton form. Pacific Northwest totem poles, they were often used as supports for the front of plank houses. Potlatch marked Erections of new totem poles sometimes. Chiefs often threw valuable objects in the ocean to show con conspicuous consumption. Honor was very important to them. War could easily break out. Once a war began, when guests outsung their hosts, making the hosts humiliated. Wars conducted for slaving, for profit wars, that's what slave, so they'd go get slaves. And, anyway, they'd even head down to Mexico to get slaves. Southwest Shells as currency, lecture 23, late period cultures of the Great Plains, horseback warriors. Many of Buffalo Bill's actors were Native American. He created a negative and misleading image of North American, Native American. Uh, Great Plains, 1.1 million square miles. West was dry, but covered in bison. East half was suitable for farming. Villages developed um, Canada to Texas. Northwest Plains, nomad Buffalo. Span buffalo evolution itself. Head smashed in is 12 meters deep in bone. Herd density ebbed and flowed. Certain groups built corrals to hoard herd bison into. Bison hunters gave up big spears for arrows, further range and safer to use. Quivera farming and seasonal bison hunt. Coronado bison hunt Coronado was looking for gold he left a few horses as gifts in Quivera the Spanish were impressed with the bison hunt um, before they started using the horses they used dogs and um, lots of them they had lots and lots of dogs and they were long-haired dogs and they were used to haul bison the dog could carry a hundred pounds with a travois that's impressive eh? did they didn't look that big the dogs in the pictures they looked like a setter or something. Anyway, uh, 100 pounds, pretty powerful. Uh, their dogs had long hair, they had lots and lots of dogs. The Plains people first called horses mystery dogs or power dogs. Horses allowed both winter and summer hunts. This dispatched, uh, displaced herds. Hunting grounds became battlegrounds. Then guns were introduced and things became even worse. Horse gun disease introduced by European traders seriously altered things. Farming, hoe made of bison scapula, 
These were only semi-sedentary villages, 900 C, Eastern Great Plains, changes occurring, expansion of village life due to corn farming, expansion, corn easier to grow in South, Suan people built palisades, Kadi, Kadoan did not, house form changes from rectangular to circular lodges, why? Oak Hill Village, 42 circular houses, 1250. Rectangular built, 1150. Cahokian by 1400 people settled into about the same places they were found in at contact. That's European contact. Kadu, Kadu speakers were Pawnee. Arakawa in north, but speak Kadoan migrated there? Introduced circular houses. Winter counts kept and preserved on bison skins and then on paper. Men did hunting and women did the farming. James Murray had a white dad soldier and Pawnee mother. Sacred bundles owned and cared for by chiefs. Owner imbued with magical powers. Ancestral things in bundles. One um, one bottle that Murray saw had an ancestral skull in it. Uh, the priests knew what to do with the objects in the bundle. Peach, priests watched cycles of Mars and Venus. And this involved the capture of a girl from a neighboring truck. And it was not good. Um, girl was tied naked to scaffold. And um, when Mars rose, the girl was shot full of arrows and sacrificed. So this was just, this is what they did. Um, and uh, then Europeans um, witnessed it and they did not think it was very good. So that was in uh, 1838, that was the last girl that was sacrificed in that way. It was um, because the Europeans shut that practice down. So 15-year-old um, Sue, it was some other, James knew the name, but it was something that I didn't recognize and I didn't write down but it was some specific type of Sioux girl um, 15 year old was killed that way and that was the last one so or last recorded one the last known one pilgrims 1620 Plymouth Rock Algonquin and Iroquois East Great Lakes to coast South Canada and down domesticated dogs quite early it was huge the amount of land that um, they had anyway uh, domesticated dogs quite early. Northeast culture, semi-nomadic, hunter-gatherer, corn in 800s, but farming adopted 1000 CE. Mississippi civilization was the catalyst. Algonquin covered way more territory. PEI of Nova Scotia, um, South Ontario, and way down the coast in the U.S. Algonquins have been there for thousands of years. Earlier Qua villages, prepared for attack ritualized cannibalism and he didn't talk about this very much or at all really he just mentioned that it occurred so this was I you know it's funny because I had thought oh well the Iroquois people must be um, really gentle and nonviolent because they were farmers right and I was thinking so for a long time until I watched this movie about And, well, it was set back anyway. And I thought, how could that be? Because they were farmers. And uh, so I don't know. Sometimes you have some ideas about people and you think, oh, well, um, you associate one thing with another and not correctly so. And so, anyway, ritualized cannibalism. Agriculture may have made life worse, not better. Forest cleared for farming. They moved villages frequently, 20 to 50 years in one place only. Draper village, 20 acres. The bigger the village, the faster resources depleted. They formed a confederation of five tribes, the Great League of Peace. And these were not a peaceful people. Um, the five nations were the Seneca, the Cayuga, the Onan. Onondago, the Oneida, and the Mohawk. Each nation lived in separate territory within the modern state of New York. Mohawk guarded East Door, Seneca guarded the West Door. The Onondaga were the keepers of the Central Fire, the place where the Great Council met. Fifty chiefs, Sackham, 
represented their nations. Those Sachem were elected representatives of their clan, voted into the, their positions for life by clan female elders, the matriarchy of each matri linear longhouse. So it's considered to be the de first democracy in America, but it's really not. Like, it's just the female elders who vote in certain people, right? So anyway, um, and they could vote them out. So peace did not extend beyond the Confederacy to other groups. Um, they were hostile and expansionistic, these people. So anyway. Wampum, belts of shell beads, read from right to left, sometimes used as trade currency since beads had a value of their own. Long darkening of sun on first day council met. Doesn't appear to fit with solar eclipse date though. Vikings, Vinland, just before 1000 CE. 985 Viking colony of Greenland. Vinland in Newfoundland. Vikings repeatedly visited between then and 1300. 1497 Cabot visited, found cod, evidence of habitation, but didn't find people. 1524 Giovanni, I didn't know who he was, so you might want to look that up. Uh, sent by French. Cart Cartier, 1535-36, mapped out St. Lawrence River, met Iroquois. 1603 Champlain, beaver wars with Iroquois. Uh, Squanto was an English-speaking man who had been kidnapped, become a slave, and lived in England people all dead. Apparently he was the guy the pilgrims had Thanksgiving with. I don't know. Anyway, so that's what I learned from watching that. But it looks to me like the people who live down in Southern California, totally peaceful. And well, it honestly, a few more people than that. I've mentioned, right? And um, in previous videos I've talked about it. And it looks like the people that were along the coast, the Algonquins, they were pretty much mined in their own, and it looks like they had been there forever, for a long, well, I don't know, for, I don't know, but um, for a long time. And it looks like the Iroquois moved in, and they were not very, not very friendly neighbors. Um, anyway. But, so uh, I really enjoyed watching that. I would highly recommend everybody do it. I, um, I will go through it again because my notes are not very complete and I would like to know more about this. This is very, very interesting stuff. So I'm gonna eat my dessert and you should put that on hold now.